Hello friends and enemies, welcome back to Happy For Now. It's me as well here with romance recommendations. I am getting back on the rec game. It's been a while, I know, but I'm here and I'm back to recommend some books. So if you have a trope you want me to do a recommendation video on, please let me know in the comments. But today we are doing workplace romances because I realized the other day that I had enough to do this, which is really exciting. <laughs> This is one of those tropes that I really, really like. I think it's the forced proximity element of it. Also, it often incorporates fake dating and one bed and a lot of other like foundational tropes for me that I absolutely adore. So yeah, I've got five books for you today that I loved that feature workplace romances. We're gonna dive right in with probably one of the hottest ones on this list, but also the one that I think you have to suspend your sense of, uh, reality and belief the most on and that is three simple rules by nikki sloan this is one that is very hard to recommend but i want to put it on this list because i want more people to read it but it is not going to be for everyone and you need to listen closely to what i tell you about it because you're going to know very quickly if this one is not for you this one follows a uh a boss and employee she makes a mistake at work and has to pay for the difference and she doesn't have that kind of money to pay for it so she goes to this club called the Blindfold Club. And this opens up the whole series, which I still need to read, but. Whew. Okay, so the women are blindfolded and put on display for auction in private rooms, basically, and men stroll through. Now, one big preface to this before they ever go into this thing is they've signed agreements. Um, they've signed forms with what they will and won't do. There's a lot of consent involved ahead of time on this, and then they're blindfolded and they don't know who the person is that they end up hooking up with so that's part of it it's supposed to be like kind of you know a little taboo a little fun and uh it turns out her boss shows up the night she's there selling herself to make up this money she needs to pay for a mistake she made because she wants this promotion really bad and she doesn't know it's her boss so obviously it's a little again you've got to be willing to suspend some disbelief in this and how this works out but it is smoking hot. Uh, Nikki Sloan for me always delivers on that element. I always find her books to be really, really sexy, really, really enjoyable to read and a good time overall. Um, I will say again, this is one that is going to either work really, really well for you or not at all. Um, and for me, it worked really well and I really enjoyed it. I liked the premise. It was unique. And I think for me, that's part of it is like, I really like a unique premise when it comes to these things. And this definitely delivered on that front. Uh, in no way, in no way was this realistic, but that's fine. We don't always have to have realism in our romances. Um, yeah, oh, it was hot. Then we have Pulling Doubles by my fave, Christina C. Jones. This is a doctor's office workplace romance. Oh, the other one there, she's like a project manager at a marketing agency. So, you know. Then, yeah, pulling doubles, we got our doctor nurse romance. This follows Devin and Joseph. Devin is a nurse. She's finishing up her internship to be like a nurse practitioner. Um, and Devin is kind of a take no shit woman. And I love that about her. She's very like, no, this is not how that's gonna work. And Joseph is arrogant and full of himself and needs someone who can bring him back down to earth a little bit. And Devin does just that. It is, as all Christina C. Jones, laugh out loud and super duper sexy. So the perfect mix of a rom and com for me in a Christina C. Jones book, you can't go wrong. This was so fun. They bicker a lot and there's like a lot of back and forth and you know, that tension building, so perfect. Uh, and I'm pretty sure there's a hot scene in a closet at work. So there's that. <laughs> Next we have You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria. This is a telenovela star, uh, two telenovela stars. Um, one is Jasmine who is not the most fluent in Spanish and has to do a bilingual show on a Netflix equivalent. It is a new telenovela. And Ashton who is older man, not like way, way older, but he's definitely older than Jasmine. Um, and his career is dying and he kind of jumps on the show last minute to hopefully boost his fame in the States because he's more known elsewhere for his telenovelas. Um, Jasmine also is like recovering from like a really crappy breakup from this like rock star musician guy who's a piece of shit. And we watch them have a really awkward meet cute. Um, like he literally spills coffee on her the first time they meet and or no i think he does some anyway she gets coffee spilled on her like before their first like table read 
and she ends up having to go to the table read in like a kid's I Heart New York shirt and I think bike shorts or something. Like it's ridiculous. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, he was the one who spilled the coffee on her. And it just was so good. I really liked the family in this book. So not only does Jasmine have a really great supportive family, but she also makes a family at work amongst her friends who are helping her get better with her Spanish for the telenovela. And then we have um, just like this closeness and community within the book uh, for Jasmine. And then Ashton is like kind of lost a little bit. He is actually a single father, which we don't find out right away, and has kept his kid out of, public, out of the public eye. So there's a lot going on there around his career and what he's trying to do. And I really loved how this all worked. Anyways, the real plot of this ends up being that they start rehearsing in private so she can get better with her Spanish and things and he's helping her and she's helping him like with stuff and they end up kissing. And there is wonderful use and sex positivity in this book around lube and toys and stuff like that. And I really, really appreciate that representation, especially in a traditionally published book. And yeah, for me, this was just absolute perfection. I love Alexis Daria. I've read her other series, her dance off books, some of that and loved it. And I got so excited when this got announced. I mean, this cover is stunning. Um, I still need to read uh, the new one that came out last year, but I can't wait to because it's honestly, Alexis Daria is rising quickly on my favorites list. Next, we have one that's been very popular, but I do think is worth a mention if you've been hesitant on it. The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood is absolutely delightful. This is not a book for those who don't like these tropes, obviously. And I will say, don't think of this as a steamy book. This is not high on the sexy time scale. It's right in the middle, I would say. I do think the scene that happens in the book is really great, but it is not like this, like, oh my God, like I need to take a cold shower type of book that people seem to think it is. Uh, this for me was just so good and I'm not, I do read fan fiction, we all know this. If you're new here, I love fan fiction, but I don't read Raylo fic because I don't personally like that shit, but I will read published Raylo fic if that makes sense. I will read anything with the serial numbers scrubbed off for this one. Uh, this is Olive who is a PhD candidate in her third year and Adam who is a professor and she is trying to convince her friend who is dating her ex because she realized they were perfect for each other that she's happy and fine <laughs> and in doing so she kisses the first person she sees when her friend's there to prove a point and it's adam who happens to be this like intimidating guy at the school that like no people are like going he's hot but like they don't want to talk to him he's scary etc and like very serious and doesn't date type. And it is really interesting to watch. Um, so yes, they have this fake relationship. There are just some really, really great scenes of building up to um, they're finally hooking up in this one bed at a conference. There is, I do wanna give a quick content note here. There is a sexual assault in the book and it is handled with the character not on page but it is addressed um but yeah so one of the characters is like a villain type and he does some not great things to olive but we do handle it and it is really just a fun book overall uh, i really enjoy the love hypothesis but i totally know why it's not for everyone and the last one is a shorty but a goodie and that is 30 day boyfriend by whitney g I am new to the Whitney G universe. I am slowly going to be reading more of her books after this one though. Um, and this is a boss employee relationship. He needs a fake fiance to prove to this person whose business he wants to buy that he's a family man and he's serious and not this playboy that he's been billed as. So Emily is his assistant and he convinces her to do this. No intimacy, no kissing, no none of this. Like it's only for cameras situation. Now we also need to know about Nicholas, her boss, who is like blocking every single interview she's going on because she's trying to leave and go get a different job. And it's kind of like not gonna take no for an answer sort of dude. So he uh, finally talks her into this, offers her a bunch of money. Of course, he is an asshole, big time asshole, but this is a really quick short read. So it's really fun to watch them bicker and banter and her like not tolerate his bullshit, which is my favorite thing in these books. 
and then obviously them slowly realizing they're in love with each other uh, and it just was a really cute, fun, quick, quick audiobook that I listened to. So if you're looking for a shorty on this with this trope, that is like a perfect one for it. Those are my workplace romance recommendations. Let me know your favorite workplace romance and if you've got another trope you want me to wreck. And if you don't want to do that, leave me a briefcase emoji in the comments. I will have links to all of these books in that description box for you, as well as links to be my friend anywhere on the internet, and I will see y'all in just a few days. Bye. Already packing, come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. About to see the world in action, what we can be. Life with no distractions, we'll get